I trust science. I don't trust scientists. Race car spelled backwards is still race car. This is the race car spelled backwards podcast. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Brad, and with me, as always, is Jamie, and this is Race Car Spell Backwards, episode 84. Jamie, how you doing, man? On the sign language again. Oh, man. Jamie on the sign language. 84. 84, man. 84 episodes. I have made it to high school by 1984. It's a great Van Halen album, too. I was born in 1984. So, did your dad, for your birth first birthday present, give you Van Halen 1984? I had a nineteen a Van Halen 1984 tour t-shirt that I actually wore in high school. It was a red shirt, and it came from the 1984 Van Halen World Tour. Did your dad tour. buy it for you? No, I bought it at his place in Little Five Points in Atlanta called Junk Man's Daughter. Back in the day, mm. you could go there and buy old concert t-shirts that were used, apparently. Now they're called vintage and cost 100 bucks. Yeah, back then, it was like... A little more than Goodwill. I huh. probably paid 15 bucks for this t-shirt. It was a red shirt. It said Van Halen World Tour 1984-1984. And it had all the cities located on the back. And I wore that I wore that joker. I wore it out. I, I bought a be- bunch of shirts. I there. begged to go to 1984. My parents wouldn't let me. They were concert. Mine wouldn't let me go either. Something about well, my Well, you're, age. you know, you know, <laughs> two months born. old. I was like, born. Might be a problem. Yeah, it wouldn't work. Last weekend, Saturday night, we had the Clash. We're going to talk about everything Clash related as we go through this episode. But before we get into it, Jamie, what did you think about the on track racing during the Clash? Just the racing. I love the Clash. I love it. You like the racing? I love the racing. I like bumping someone out to the outside and taking the lead, or bumping someone to the outside, they rotate back to 15th, you gain four. I completely enjoyed it. I enjoy, I thought it was good racing. It's the best race every year since the new car's been introduced. I'm not far from agreeing with you because it remind the clash this weekend. I watch a lot of the cars tour and just late model on asphalt racing, late model stock racing, and that's what it reminded me of. It reminded me of Caraway. Like it's just a short track. It didn't turn into a clown show on the track this weekend. You didn't have, I mean, at the end we had some cautions from some idiots, but it didn't, it wasn't like that the whole race. It wasn't just people just dive bombing, moving people out of the way. It was, it was bumpers to butts the whole race and they were moving and grooving and slipping and sliding. And the people that knew how to bump right won. Correct. I told my son on the last, not the last, the restart before the last restart. When they took off, Denny Hamlin restarted on the bottom in third position. I told my son, I said, Denny Hamlin's going to win this race. Now, when they had the final restart, I thought Denny was going to lose it. But Denny said he he wasn't too worried because he had Kyle Busch behind him, and Kyle's always raced him clean, so he wasn't overly concerned. Kyle's a pretty clean driver. Yeah, I got no Everywhere. issue with Kyle's driving. I got no issue with Denny Hamlin winning. I thought he, Denny did what he had to do to hold the guys off. My he, neighbor asked me yesterday, he's like, what do you think about that? I didn't know Denny Hamlin had the skill, but Denny's from grassroots small tracks in Virginia. Oh, Denny's old school. Yeah, he, he didn't grow up just doing Denny's asphalt, a, cement, mile and a halfers. Denny's one of those drivers, though, you either love him or you hate him. And I, I like him more wearing the black hat. I, I embrace I, him. I, Denny Hamlin's one of the few drivers we actually have with a flipping personality. I hated him two, three years ago. Was it three years ago? We've been doing this a while. It was three years ago. When you met him, yeah. 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 I hated him until Since the day then, I met we him. we became friends. Oh, yeah. I love Denny. No, I, for me, it was the podcast. Like, I'm, I'm going to get me an Actions Detrimental t-shirt or hoodie, probably, because it's freezing out here in the studio. I mean, he's arrogant sometimes, but we all are. Yeah, Denny's Denny's a little arrogant, but he has a the thing is Denny has a personality. Very, very, very few NASCAR drivers have personalities today. Denny Hamlin has a personality. I think Ryan Blaney is trying really hard to have a personality, but it's as has been proven year over year, it's hard to have a really big personality at Penske because 
They Roger, don't allow it. Roger don't like pens- don't like personalities. No, he likes uniforms. He's gonna be uh, wear your khakis. And Joey Logano has a personality, but I think he, he still shows his butthole personality. He's limited. I think he's limited. You on think he'd be more of a butthole if he was allowed to? Yes. Do you? I think um, Chase Elliott and all those Hendrick boys. They're, they're not allowed to they're have not allowed. personality either. I think Bubba Wallace has a personality, but he's also very polarizing. And people, you either, Bubba's like Denny. You either love him or you hate him. There's no in-betweens with Bubba. Remember back in the day, the Gibbs drivers all had personalities? Yeah, at one time they did. Yeah. Kyle Busch has a personality, but it's just changed. Like, Kyle went from being the snarky, smart aleck to the, I mean, he's just so chill now. Now he's the diplomat of the sport. Oh, yeah, he's praising NASCAR, like how well, well they've fantastic. done. I'm so happy. Like, this is the best move. His NASCAR's brother would have never done that. Kurt would have said, Kurt it's would, garbage. It's all garbage. Well, Kurt would have, in his older years, would he entertain me, too? I like not liking his brother. I like not liking Kyle, too. But now I like Kyle, so. Well, I like not liking Kurt, but now I like Kurt, too. I mean, yeah, I like you Kurt know. too. I like Kyle, I like Denny. Kurt, and Denny. The guys I used to not like, I'm starting to really like. Yeah, me, too. They um, flipped the page. Tyler, you see Tyler. I saw Tyler Reddick on Twitter. He won the Red Dick Award. Or actually, he won the Dick Award, according to the post. What? Ginger Dick, maybe? It just said Dick. And, I mean, Janet reminded me that it is Red Dick, so. He is Red Dick. Maybe he won the Reddest Dick Award. Hey, his beard is really red. Exactly. I saw him interviewed. So that's why his last name is Red Dick. Yeah, it has nothing to do with his family her- heritage. No, like in the medieval times in Scotland, yeah. where there's a lot of gingers, or Ireland, one or the other. His ancestor so was peeing in the woods, and someone saw him from afar and said, "Red Dick, my goodness, he has a red dick." Oh, laddie has a red dick. Holy moly! And now we have glory Tyler. be the king with that red dick. And, and now we have thy Tyler Red Dick. That would be a That's hard how he earned his surname. You know you got made fun of a Sir lot. Sir Red Dick. You know he got made fun of a lot in school for that. So his his hair matches his carpet, Sir Red Dick. Well, he it says it right in the name. Red Dick. My goodness. They can say Reddick all Short they temper much? If you say it fast together, it's Reddick. If, if you say <laughs> it like it's phonetically pronounced, it's Red Dick. If the carpet ma- matches the scalp, does that mean you have double the temper tantrum that a normal red person would have? Yes. That's my that's my thought. I, I don't really know, but I'm going to go with yes. I, I don't know anyone with matching, male or female, that I can verify matching carpet with scalp. Do you? No, I've actually never walked up to a red-headed dude and asked him was his balls red. What about too? a woman? No, never done that either. That's weird. Maybe you should do it on the way home. I don't want to get shot or murdered. Go to... You just go to the public. Go to Ingles and, hey, hey, lady. Go to the Ingles. Hey, sir. Get on the loudspeaker and say, I need a ginger to the front, please. Ginger to the front. <laughs> Everyone's going to have to drop trowel now because I need to verify <laughs> Jamie needs that to the know. carpet matches the scalp. Hey, you, you could probably get away with that nowadays, too. They're probably like, yeah, it's all right. Jamie can check. I will call it gender affirming. <laughs> I don't care about the gender. You're, you're the, you can work the gender affirming department at the English. It's not even a sexual act. I just want to. But that's how you could get away with it. Then I it, can say I actually know someone that matches top and bottom. A seven-time Formula One champion, Lewis Hamilton, has announced that he will be departing Mercedes to join Ferrari at the end of the 2024 season. If I was him, I would too. Yeah, I mean, I he went from winning tons of championships to being stuck back in the... Was Red Bull not hiring? <laughs> I guess not. I mean, could, shoot. Could he not go drive, be the He teammate? couldn't even come in second like uh, Van Stinkenberg's. Could, he couldn't have been Van Stinkenberg's, Van Sturfen's um, teammate? You can only have one winner. But, I mean, still, he would... You could have them two ro- rotate, and they could win every race in the 2024 season. And then it, the championship would come down to just those two battling it that out would be the last in- race. More than interesting than just one person. I mean, it makes season whatever they're going to do. of the. Hey, are they going to have an Indy race at Barber this year? I don't know. I hadn't seen it. I hadn't looked at the schedule for Indy yet. I would how like how to much go. does Indy cost? I think it's free to bring your kid. Bring a beer? 
Bring a beer, get in free. Six pack to charity and six pack for you. Something like that. It's in Alabama. Bring you're, your sister. You're a former, <laughs> you're a former cop. You get in free. No public display of attention. attention. No PDA with no your public display of no attention. attention. We're Don't give her no attention. In We're in about Alabama now. So NASCAR moved the Bush Clash from Sunday evening to Saturday night due to inclement weather and out of concern for the fans' safety. They said. Rumor has it that the city of L.A. wasn't giving NASCAR much of a choice on moving it. It was either move it or don't have it. The city is actually in a state of emergency currently. That state of emergency started Sunday morning, and residents were asked not to leave their homes if they didn't have to on Sunday. Well, fire, floods, and tidal waves seem to be the problem, so... it's funny because I told my wife Saturday, I said, guess what? They moved the race because of rain. And she goes, like you always say, honey, if you want to get out of a drought, invite NASCAR to come to town. It's that's true. what seems like it happens. If they're going to have a race outside, they're going to have rain. Well, how do you actually feel about the decision? We've been very critical of NASCAR I think, in the past. I think it was a great decision. I think it's the, it was the only logical decision that made sense. So... I text Jamie Saturday morning. I'm like, so NASCAR is racing in L.A. this weekend, and it's supposed to start raining Sunday morning and not let up till Wednesday evening. So Wednesday, Thursday of this week, they'd be able to run the clash. That's not going to work. They have to have that track torn up by this weekend or next weekend. They only get a very short amount of time to tear that track up. I think, I don't know how they accidentally made the right decision, but they did. I agree. Like, NASCAR did what they had to do to get the event in. I feel bad because, man, we were there live last year after we won our championship cannonball run. Yeah, I know. I was telling Denise, my wife, that That's, I like, It's been exactly a year. It has been. Cannonball. Tomorrow. We are cannonball run champions. Tomorrow would be when we got home. Yeah. That's weird. One year from when we got home. We've been cannonball run champions for a year now. How does it feel? <laughs> Same as it did last year. <laughs> Well, I don't think anyone has taken a bone stock and if they have type it, two Prius. If they have it, don't matter because we already yeah, done you it. You can't take it from us. We got the You spot. can only beat us. No, I think what NASCAR did was a great move. I 100% support it. I, I don't think they could have made a better decision if they lucked into it, honestly. I mean, I do think they lucked into making the right decision, but I don't see this. So all of us fans are praising this, but I don't see this happening Ever again. Not for a points paying race at a regular super speedway. I do have one problem, though. This ain't going to happen at Michigan. First, let me compliment Harvick and Quint. I think they did a great job. Yeah, we're going to talk about Fox. But I don't think, as you just said, they'll ever make the right decision again. No, I don't think NASCAR will. I think Bill Gates has to allow them to do that. NASCAR is not going to move Michigan up a day because it's going to rain. I mean, they they're, should. They're not going to move Atlanta up a day because it's going to rain. And they should. They are going to do exactly what they've always done. They'll move the race an hour earlier. They'll make, we're going to run the race. Instead of running, it's going to, it's going to rain all day Sunday. So instead of running the race at one o'clock on Sunday, we're going to start it at 1245. So we're entertaining some customers at the Atlanta race in two weeks. Yeah. It has rained every Sunday since Thanksgiving. Yeah, I mean, it's looking pretty bleak. <laughs> I mean, I haven't the looked at the two-week forecast. The odds of it not raining at Atlanta are extreme. Three weeks. We have three weeks. Super Bowl 500 Atlanta. Three weeks. Is that three weeks? Something like that. Super right. Bowl's a week. Two weeks. That's class. No, that's Atlanta. I mean, Daytona. Two. Three is yeah, three, three weeks. weeks. Two weeks to Daytona, three weeks to Atlanta. That's that math, that Jamie's math skills over here hard at work. Or maybe it's meth skills. We ain't using my math skills. because I was be drinking some tap me. water. I heard there's so much meth <laughs> in the, the water. It's the fluoride. Yeah. It's probably that fluoride made you stupid. Uncle though. Bill Gates told me to drink more tap water so I could be more under his control. So, according to the guy on Twitter, Denny Hamlin's the GOAT. Denny Hamlin won the clash at the L.A. Memorial Coliseum on Saturday night. He started the race on the pole. He led 58 laps. Took the lead with, from teammate Ty Gibbs with eight laps to go and, and locking him up every corner. Baby little Ty He survived Ty. a green-white checkered, and Denny Hamlin won Where the race. Where did baby Ty Ty finish after he bumped his ass? 18th. 
<laughs> Ty, Ty, that's why I love it. He pitched a tantrum and ended up wrecking. That's why I love it. He I, got bumped and could not get back in the line till 18th. I think no, he spun out. Remember? Because he's an idiot. Him and Joey were tap tapping, and he got. Well, so, Denny Denny Hamlin was literally locking the tires up every corner, sliding the car through. I thought there was no way he was, he was only locking the right front. I didn't think he'd be able to hold him off though. Did you see how red his rotors were? Joey Legato and um, those Penske rotors were massively bright. It was insanity how bright they were. How about Kevin Harvick on the broadcast admitting to wrecking people last year? I, I loved it. What's going to be so funny is if Tuesday NASCAR penalizes Kevin Harvick a hundred thousand dollars for wrecking something he did last year. Crash in twenty twenty three. I wouldn't put it. That's past such him. a NASCAR move. Oh yeah. Now, Kevin, Kevin, you remember back in 1998 when you were in the Xfinity I wonder if Kevin series. negotiated with Fox that they would pay all fines from Probably. last year. I'm sure uh, Denny Hamlin worked that into his actions detrimental negotiations for this year. I hope year. so. Denny don't care. Denny's got the money. It's hidden in the one of the rooms of his house. I'm one sure. of his 200,000 square foot room, yeah. basement rooms. Yeah, I mean, Freddie Kraft said he, li- he could live down there for a year and nobody ever Probably knows. just on the pool table. Find that digital code thing and probably already lives down lifts there. up machine guns and dollar dollar bills. So due to moving the race up a day early, we got rid of the, they eliminated the heat races and we had a true elimination style qualifying. Only twenty two drivers were able to qualify for the race, leaving one provisional for a former champion to use. And the former champion was the champion just last year. That got to use that. So yeah. no, I mean Honestly, man, I enjoyed qualifying. It's nice. You had 40-something drivers out there. NASCAR requires you to take your car out there if you're going to run in their series full-time. So all these people drug these cars out there. It's race and get in. That's it. Like, you want to make this race, you got to be fast during qualifying. I like it. It's There's no discrimination. It doesn't care who you are. Be fast. Fastest guy. I mean... Josh Williams, I thought was going to make the race. Don't we used to work with that guy? No, a different Josh. Same mullet. Same mullet, different guy. Different tattoos. Daniel Suarez didn't. He didn't qualify. I mean, when Suarez can't qualify, you know there's a problem. Suarez didn't qualify, but Suarez <laughs> won the race. What do you mean? Race. There's a problem. It, like you said, it's up to skill. There's a problem with him. Is what I mean. Well, he can win the Mexican race, but he can't win the American race. Exactly. Josh Berry didn't make it. Austin Dillon didn't make it. That's not a surprise. Like I said, skill set. Honestly, the only person I'm really surprised about that didn't make it was Christopher Bell. He's one of the two that we picked last week to win. Boy, he didn't him even and make Larson, it. and he didn't even make the race. So I guess Joe Gibbs gave him all the good stuff last year. Eric Jones didn't <laughs> make it, but. Gibbs is going to make sure little Gibbs has got what he needs. Baby Gibbs, he had a car. Oh, he had a car. He's the number one driver at Joe Gibbs Racing, I think, in in yes. the boss's mind. Yes, I think him Hamlin's and the best. Denny and – I think it's a Denny tie year. One of those two wins – I think Denny Hamlin wins the Daytona 500. I think he'll finally win a championship this year. Yes. I think Denny Hamlin wins the Daytona 500, the Coke 600, and the championship this year. I, I'm rooting for a little DH. I'm pulling for Denny. I might be a Denny fan this season. We might. I might just go ahead and do that. I'm, instead it's of being a shame, a he drives fan, that Oda. I mean, you know what? I don't even care anymore. I just he's got a personality. He entertains me. I enjoy listening to his podcast. I enjoy the stupid things he says when he gets out of a car. I. I mean, I think he said it for the last time, though, this weekend. He waited for it. You see it? Yeah. He, he kept like, going, hey, come here, come here. hey, hey, I got something else to say. Yeah. I, I think he said it for the last time, though. I hope he said it for the last and time. It didn't go over as well. No. Bristol was magical. Bristol was awesome. I beat the second your time, driver. wasn't that great. What if he's our favorite driver, so he didn't beat himself? So it's not true. That's true. I'm a Denny fan. So, I even drive a Toyota. Should I put 11 on the side of the Prius? No, as long as you move it in the middle of the door. <laughs> I can put it on the window like the Mexican series. <laughs> on the driver's side? <laughs> yeah, on the driver's side. <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> That's why Daniel Suarez was able to beat all of them. They put the stickers see. over their windows. <laughs> I can't see. I can't see. 
Kyle Busch has now finished second, third, and second in all three events at the LA Memorial Coliseum. What, do you, what would you say about that? It. You can't close it? I guess. Close a deal, KB. I don't know. Close it. I thought Kyle had the car to win, but apparently the adjustments they made didn't really help him out. What did you think about the Joey Ty fight afterwards? It wasn't even a fight. Like, oh, it was a perfect fight for those two. It was a NASCAR fight. They're both going, hey, he, he, hey, you, don't I, do that to me again. It was funny. Do you hearing, know who my grandfather is? It's funny hearing Joey Logano telling Ty not to do it. And Ty's like, dude, I've literally been watching you do it my whole life. I'm not going to forget this, Ty Ty. And Joey's like, I'm not ever going to forget this. No, I don't think Joey will forget it. Yeah, I like Ty. I don't like Ty, but I like his response. I hope you do Good. remember it. Don't forget it. I'm telling you, if Ty gives, takes a swing at Joey Logano, oh, bust I, his I, nose. I want them both to injure each other. Eye, I will be a Ty Gibbs fan. I could see me being a, because if Ty Gibbs hits Joey, I'm a fan. I'm sorry. I, all right, I, Ty. I dislike Joe Gibbs. I mean, Joe Gibbs. <laughs> Joe Gibbs. I dislike <laughs> Joey Logano so much, I'm willing to be a Ty Gibbs fan. Joe Gibbs. He'll wreck there's Joe an 81 year old I'll vote for president. Joe Gibbs. Yeah, it's a Joe thing. And he'll make his grandson Ty Ty as vice president. Yeah, and he don't even have to worry about his grandson <laughs> leaving his cocaine laying around the living room. And Denny Hamlin will be Secretary of State. He might be VP. <laughs> he might. I think he'd make a great one. Heck, I'd vote for Denny Hamlin as vice president. I'd vote for Denny Hamlin for president before I'd vote honest, for Joe Biden. Between our choices, I choose C. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, none of the above, D. <laughs> Loose Cannons 44 is a comedy style podcast where we read headline news stories from the week and we add our flair of comedy to them. You're not going to want to miss it. Check out Loose Cannons 44 on YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts. Kyle Larson admits to making contact and spinning out Bubba Wallace at the end of the clash after Bubba got into him multiple times. Tyler Reddick also spun out Ross Chastain at the end of the race. I thought it was awesome. You think NASCAR penalizes Kyle Larson for admitting to... No, I don't think, do it, guys. I think it's a new season. This is a season we'd stop. Like, we did this. Yes. NASCAR... Uh, Have the, at it, boys. France, Kennedy... All of you guys, O'Donnell, just stop. Phelps, all you idiots out there at NASCAR, listen to us. Listen for once. Please listen to us. This should be the last stop, podcast you listen to. Don't listen to Denny. Don't punish him. Stop penalizing these drivers for having a personality. Stop penalizing these drivers for admitting to wrecking. Let them admit to it. Heck, go wreck them. I don't want Bowman Gray, but I don't want 285 either. I want something interesting. I don't want to watch a boring I race. want personalities that don't get along. I'm all for it, Kyle Larson. Thank you for admitting to wrecking your friend Bubba hey, Wallace. Thank you, little Red Dick. Thanks, Red Dick, for it. Yeah. I mean, just I have no problem with anybody wrecking Ross Crastain. Let really Ross be Ross this year. And yeah, maybe. Don't tamp it down like you did halfway through the season. I think it's too year. late. I think Ross is ruined already. Unless he's going to start heavily drinking Bush Light. <laughs> he's ruined. <laughs> well, he could go Bud Light, and then he can be confused. Well, he's driving the Bush Light car, so. Well, it's really just Bud Light in a different can. It's Bud Light with more water. <laughs> more water. Is that Colorado it's, it's, water? No, they're from many. No, no, they're not from many. They're from Missouri. You're talking about Coors. That's from Colorado. Yeah, Coors. They use mountain water, not tap water. Rocket Mountain. They use tap water to take Bud Light to Bush Light. That's how they Bush. I hate the new Bush Light commercials. Bush. I don't understand them. Are you struggling to survive in the wilderness? Bush. Yeah, you should. Are you hanging off the side of a mountain about to die? Bush. You have you been <laughs> lost in the mountains for three weeks and about to be a all by a bear? Bush. You should shave that bush down to the landing strip. Bush. <laughs> bush. I mean, that's just, it's it's the most random thing. Have you been involved in an accident? Bush. bush. Do you need a lawyer? Do you need Morgan and Morgan? From bush. our previous show. Did your boyfriend of five years just leave you? Bush. bush. <laughs> have you recently listened to Loose Cannons 44, the podcast? Bush. bush. And we're not sponsored by Bush. Bush.
I could say bush after everything Jamie says the rest of the podcast, and it would highly annoy everybody listening to the Where show. Where are you going with that trimmer? Bush. bush. <laughs> I got to work today. Bush. bush. <laughs> Kevin Harvick in the booth with Fox officially now. Jamie, what did you think about his first race in the booth? I thought that they were fantastic, but Fox the same production staff are ruining it. Three years now. Three freaking NASCAR seasons in a row. Can you put the cameras We've where they're talking about stuff? We've had to look at stuff? the flipping cartoon images. Stop. I hate the cartoons, but I'm not going to complain about it all season because they're not going to change. So this will be the only time this season I'm going to complain they about They learned the from NASCAR to not listen to their fans. They hate us. What a great, good job, guys. Fox and NASCAR hates the fans. They NBC belong together. Loves NBC loves the fans. Flow Racing loves the fans. But... When it comes to Kevin and Clint, good job. Yeah, I think I don't know how you accidentally made that decision, Fox, great. but you did it. Congratulations. Yeah, because Mike Joy was even improved by Kevin Harvick. So yes. Kevin Harvick and Clint Boyer are now your color guys. They're the guys who can be goofy and talk about. Did what's you notice going Clint on. was less goofy? Yes, with Kevin, Harvick. Kevin raised Kevin the bar. Improved Clint. He did. And wow. improve Mike Joy, because Mike Joy is really good at the play-by-play stuff. He always has been. Last The last few seasons, when it was just two guys in the booth, Mike hasn't been able to be that play-by-play guy. He's also had to do color commentary, and that's where... And had to restrain Clint. That's where Mike struggles at. So now Mike is back on top. I liked when they had Larry Mack up there during qualifying. I, I heard some people say Kevin looked nervous, but I don't... Thank you. Look nervous. You know what, Junior? It took him one season to come into his own. I don't know. He was good. I enjoyed him. I thought it was an improvement. But Junior's way better now than when he started. Practice makes perfect. That's all I, I agree. can say. Kevin's only going to improve if you you don't come out of the gate as strong as Kevin Harvick did this weekend at the Clash, and not improve. By can you imagine standard. how good he'll be? Or what Daytona? What's their last race? I don't uh, even know what their last race on Fox is because now we got Fox. Amazon, Netflix, YouTube, NBC, CBS, ABC, ESPN, Peacock, Peacock, the CW, the CW, USA, ESPN2, the Magnolia Channel, Magnolia Channel, DIY Network. They're all doing the race this season, so I really don't know when Dale Jr. I think NBC is doing like what five races, ten races, something like that. So. I think Dale's going to be at the Magnolia Channel calling it, too, because they're affiliated with NBC. I didn't watch the Mexican race, did you? I did not. Daniel Saras won it, but that's all I know. I you didn't watch Get in it. touch with his roots, dude. Well, I mean, what do you think happens with the clash moving forward? Do you think it returns to L.A.? Do you think it goes to Mexico like the rumor is saying? I mean, sure. I even saw one rumor that says they might take it to Guadalajara. Okay. Maybe we can do it in um, Guantanamo. Well, yeah, NFL keeps going over to uh, Europe. Why don't they do in Europe? That makes no sense either. I, I do not understand why we're forcing American football down the Europeans' throat. I mean, what I would think, I mean, I heard that Chicago Soldier Field used to run races in the 40s. Let's do it there. I, I saw a lot Let's of people. Let's kick it back. On, I saw a lot of people on X this weekend arguing with other people on X about how they cannot just take this anywhere they want to take it. I disagree. I think Why they, can, I think they can make the track smaller if they have to. Heck, we'll run 15 cars instead of 22. Hey, we could recreate Pocono in a baseball field. It'd be a, a triangle. My suggestion that is... That would we, be awesome. So I have two suggestions here. Either we run the Clash directly after the Chili Bowl on the same dirt track as oh, the Chili Bowl. Oh, that'd be awesome. Indoors? That night. I'm talking that night. That'd be awesome. Chili Bowl ends at 11 p.m. Now you're talking $12,000 tickets. Yeah. I mean, it'd be gigantic. Or, I think this is an even better idea. There's this racetrack called New Smyrna Speedway that's located in Florida, not that far from A lot of guys race that before the Daytona Speedway. Why don't we run the Clash along with the late model stock cars, along with the Cars Tour, let's take it all to New Smyrna Speedway. Hey, what and about Volusia County? Let's have a two-week. Okay, we can go to Volusia County It's Speedway. like 20 miles away. We could have a two-week Speed Weeks again. 
That'd be awesome. Let's have, we spend a week running the Clash and other late model stock, other short track events at Volusia County Speedway. And then the next week we run some practices. We run some qualifiers. We run some heat races, the Gatorade duels. Then we run trucks, cup, and Xfinity. I got an even. I think we need to run the cup I got a different Saturday. suggestion. What? Actually, it doesn't replace anything you just said. But, you know, the NFL's combined XFL with USFL. So the league that plays when the NFL's not playing. Yeah. Why don't we take one of the series and run it in the offseason? Just in the South. In the West. Aren't you... Don't you think if NASCAR wants to be front and center, they ought to be running a series year-round? No. No? No, because when NASCAR, I actually enjoy they watching. They can do ARCA year-round. I watched really good racing during the off-season on flow racing, whether it was the Ice Bowl at Talladega. Well, NASCAR doesn't have anything to do with flow racing. I know. That's the competition. Exactly. But why don't NASCAR screws up everything they touch most likely. Well, they didn't Recently. used to, but the last 10 years, yeah. So why do you 20. want to give them something else to screw up? I don't want I'm to screw up my asking for a NASCAR-affiliated race season to happen in the offseason. No. I I want less NASCAR, not more. NASCAR stresses me out because of their stupid decisions they make. They're well, let's ru- talk about the elephant in the room. What's that? What happened to SRX, dude? It just disappeared. SRX is gone. Why? They... Was it their their model didn't work because they provide the cars? I think it's a it's got to be a financial thing for them to back out. I mean, they were set to go again this season with the third season of it. I I, I think thoroughly enjoyed SRX. I did too, but I don't think it was popular enough to drive the ratings on CBS. The, obviously, the ratings weren't there. They would have kept doing it. Like, no, I think uh, look, ESPN was going to keep doing it. Racing revolves around TV ratings. NASCAR, well, that's Xfinity, where they make all their money. Truck, SRX, they revolve around TV ratings. So, if SRX is no longer here, they can tell us whatever hogwash lie they want to tell us, but it has nothing to do with anything but ratings. You will, won't won't convince me any differently. Ray Everham saw ratings it equals money. Ray Everham saw it coming. He's bringing back the IROC. He sold his portion. We already got IROC. He's bringing it back. We don't need to bring IROC back. We have IROC. And he talked to Everham. IROC, the IROC series went away, and we brought it back two years ago with the next gen car. car. We are essentially doing exactly what the IROC series did, except with 40 cars. So have you talked to Ray Everham about that? I tried to call Ray. Ray. Is he returning your calls? He's not. Ray, please return my calls. We need to discuss this. Typical management. I mean, just whatever. you, You can hide behind your voicemail all you want, Ray, but. You, Ray, got, you got a shot to come on our when show. When one of the top podcasts the in racing is one calling you, answer. Especially championship. We're we're drivers, dude. Look what we did, at Cannonball Run. And you won't return our. You call? won't return our calls. No, we're not including you in our Fourth of July celebration next I'm year. I'm not sending Ray a Christmas card next year. Oh, I'm telling my wife, take you off the mailing list. No, no more Christmas cards. He's done. Cars. Well, it's with SRX isn't coming back, but you know what is coming back. Flow Racing? Trackside Live is coming back. That was good. It's not coming back for every race, but it is coming back for a handful of SMI races starting in Atlanta. Sweet. We will be able to... We can wave signs behind them? Yes, and we're going to go earlier. It's been a long time. There's there's always... There hasn't been a reason to get to the racetrack early and probably... Remember they'd give you a Sharpie in the Home Depot sign? And you could stand up behind them? Oh, hey, yeah. Mom. Dude, I loved it. I yeah, loved I, Kenny I, that Wallace. That was awesome. I mean, I, I absolutely loved Wow. I, loved. I would get up early on Sunday, go to church, come home. I'd already been recording four hours of Trackside Live. I'd watch Trackside Live. Then I'd watch the race. Like, I got a Home Depot sign somewhere in the house. It was a whole day's event. Like, cup racing on Sunday, you got there early to experience the pre-race, then the race. They got rid of pre-race a long time ago. Dude, have you... They COVID got, ended pre-race. The haulers have disappeared. Oh, it's yeah. not the now they have carnival it used to be. They have like 15 haulers and a tent. Like, it's stupid. And everything there is 10% more than it is online. Last year, I legit walked ha- around haulers last year, found what I wanted, went on my phone while standing in front of the hauler, 
ordered the t-shirt, had it mailed to my house with shipping cheaper than I could have bought it at the racetrack hall. That's just greed. Well, that's why I don't... It's just greed, I'll, man. Getting rid of the haulers, get rid of them. Who cares? This ain't short track racing. Nobody cares, but... No, just they're, greed. They're bringing trackside live back. I think it's great. So, starting next week, we will start with the... We got no racing next week. I know, but we're going to... We'll do a show next Monday. We will? I think. <laughs> we're, it's probably going to be a short one, just so you know. But it's going to... That's where we'll start our fantasy stuff. So, we'll start our fantasy. And we're going to start our Xfinity Driver profiles next week as well. And just a little teaser. First Xfinity Driver we're going to be talking about on this show starting next week will be... That's a drum roll. Josh Williams. You think so? The mullet man. The mullet man? The man who stopped his car at Atlanta Motor Speedway on the start-finish line and got out because NASCAR said he was dangerous being out there. Walked across the infield and left his car there. Saluted the fans. Saluted the fans. He didn't want to be a danger to his competitors. I like mullet man. I like a huge fan of Josh Williams. I really, really can't wait to watch him race this year for colleague. I think. If I could grow a mullet, I would. I can't either, so don't feel bad. You so, want to try. Get some roots. Get some roots. I would, uh, I would have to start with the roots because I don't have those either. <laughs> so, yeah, you're right. If I if I had a mullet, it'd be a skullet. Isn't there a band called the roots? It'd be a skullet because there's a no skullet? hair on top. That'd be awesome, actually. Bald on the top, long in the back. A I know a dude with... That's a Mississippi dude, pisser if I've ever seen one. I know this dude, he can only grow hair the backside of his head, and yeah. he has a ponytail. It looks so ridiculous. Yeah, I'm not doing it. Bald with neck hair turned into a ponytail. I was in my very early 20s, like 20, <laughs> when my hair started falling out. And I tried I tried the Rogaine thing for like a couple months. It didn't help. Have you ever got, like, I'll bring you some cow pies from I home. shaved it. Cow poop on your head. It's supposed to work. No, I'm good with it now. I'll bring you some. You know how hard it is to be bald? No. Not hard at all. It's very easy to be bald. I don't have to worry about shampoo. I don't have to worry about conditioner. I don't have to worry about hair Don't you have to changing. treat it with something, though? I wash my hair with Just soap. Just regular soap? No shampoo? Soap. Bar soap. Huh. Now, I, I, I have to buy shaving cream and razors, but I'm a member of the Dollar Shave Club. Don't they make an electric razor for your bald head? I don't know. I use a regular razor. Never been an electric razor fan. It's I not once gonna, went bald. It's I not going to be close enough. I lost a bet and cut a chunk out of the top of my head with a razor. So, speaking of bets, maybe that'll be our... What are we going to do for the winner and the loser of the fantasy points this year? We got to put something on the line. Not money, just something stupid. So, like Jeff Gluck and Jordan Bianchi's dress up at the Daytona 500 thing. That's something stupid. Loser has to dress as another gender. For the podcast? For the for show. The podcast. All right. Because you can go to so, Goodwill and get a dress for three bucks. Season four. Episode one of season four will be the payday. Loser's down. wearing a dress. Loser wears a dress. Unless they choose to. You can't choose. Unless that is your identity. You cannot choose a identity, a different identity of what you identify as today. You can't choose what you identify like, as today. I got dangling chads with a little pencil down there. <laughs> I can't. Cho- I choose to identify as a small dick man. You got. You got a hanging chat. I got a small dick. You got I choose chads. to identify as that, and I am not changing my identification. So you could. What if I want to identify as a cat? Then you have to go buy yourself. You can't find those at Goodwill. Nope. You're gonna have to come in dressed as a cat. Okay. I. We get to choose. Winner gets to choose the gender. You cannot be the gender you are today. Correct. And winner gets to choose the gender of the loser. Right. So if I want you to identify as a female camel. I don't know if you can get a costume for that. Loser wears a dress. Let's just go with that. I'll be a camel toe. (laughs) Loser wears a dress with a camel toe. So the way our fantasy, we'll each pick one driver from each (laughs) series. You roll into that with fantasy, the way we do our fantasy. (laughs) Oh, boy. Each, each, in, we'll each pick one driver from each series. So, like the Daytona 500, we have the trucks, the Xfinity, and the Cup. So, we each pick three drivers, one point per winner. So, if I win the Cup pick and the Xfinity and not the truck, I get two points. You get one point. 
and there is no repeats. No easy. repeats. No repeats until the playoffs. Yep. And we can't pick the same driver each week. Yep. So we'll have a master sheet that we'll leave in the studio to mark names oh, off that's of each be week. Difficult. You know, anybody can win the Daytona. Anybody. We could we could waste a pick. That's exact safely. We'll be doing exactly I mean Super Speedway. This is what door bumper this is kind of how door bumper clear does it. We're just adding every series to ours. And it's one point for the winner, zero like point for the loser. I, like I think it. it's easy math. It's easier. It's cleaner. What if I make you identify as a lobster? As long as you can provide me with a lobster costume, I will identify as a lobster. Doesn't red lobster have those little things you put around your neck with the lobsters on it? The red lobsters? Uh, I don't know. I, red lobster used to have the fire hat with I them. have family from Maine. I can probably get you a lobster costume. Probably. As long as it's the game warden, sir. Everybody. The gay one? The game warden. Oh, the game warden. Can I be a gay <laughs> lobster? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, if I lose, I will identify as a gay lobster. Okay. I'm willing to be a gay lobster. Whatever makes you happy. Gay means happy. It does. I mean, a gay, what is? what would you call a gay lobster? Crab. Oh, just a lobster. <laughs> crab. I'm just call them. <laughs> a transgender lobster. Is crabs, that crabs? Is, crabs is what you get with a lobster messing with the wrong lobster. Lobsterette. Yeah. When you just lobster. Do you around. think you get pissed if you get the crabs as a lobster? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure lobster. I'd be real. A female angry. lobster will be mad at her lo male lobster husband if he comes home with a crab. Uh huh. Or multiple crabs, even. Yeah. I think a transgender lobster is a crab. Well, I mean, a transgender cat's a dog. Do you think in elementary school, there's at lobster school, there's there's a little lobster identifying as a cr some you other know, crustacean as a human? Yeah, talking every time the teacher talks, he's hey hey. I said use your clams. <laughs> I identify as a human. All right, there's no race this weekend, guys, but we will be back next week to just kick off our fantasy profile and make our fantasy picks and just get you ready for the Daytona 500. We'll have everything laid. All the events of 500 Weekend laid out for you, including the duels and all that info. So make sure you tune back in next week. But other than that, that's really all I got this week. Jamie, you got anything else? Yeah, well, you know, this is for entertainment purposes. We make fun of stuff. But you know what? You be you and be happy. Yeah. Be you and be happy. Yep. And while you're being you and be happy, make um, sure you go to YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts and check out Loose Cannon's well, I thought you were going to be a loose cannon there and take it sideways. But yeah, yeah. exactly what Brad check said. Check out our other show. Exactly what Brad so said. So thanks to everyone who listens, watches, and shares this show on social media. We greatly appreciate it. Make sure you follow us on Twitter. We are at Car Backwards. I'm at Dell underscore yeah 406 and he's at James Farrow 3. Go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, check out our other videos, check us out on Spotify and rate us. Subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts and leave us a review like Brandon did. Thanks again, Brandon. We still greatly appreciate that. And I'm working on your hat. Don't worry about that. You know, I think I've already asked you this, but Brandon, is he the aer airplane photograph guy? Yes. I really enjoy that. He yeah, has some pretty cool planes. Yeah. Go to, what's his like, Ferris. Yeah. Go subscribe or follow whatever you do on Facebook because I'm a Gen Xer. Look at his airplanes. Yeah, he does a good job. Yeah. Brandon is great, really good job. great. I enjoy his pictures. Thanks, Brandon. Good friend, too. So Good friend of the show and good personal friend of mine at this point. So Send us a DM Can I call him a friend? Us. Can I be your friend, Brandon? I'll ask him if that's okay. Okay. I had to get permission for you. I mean, I'm willing to be second string. He goes to the house of the friends on the weekend. Yes. <laughs> Send us not, a, it's not a rock club either. <laughs> right. Send us a DM or email us at racecarbackwardspod at gmail.com. Check out our newest show, Loose Cannons 44. It's available on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube Music. Make sure to check out our merch store. It's found at racecarbackwards.com or racecarbackwards.threadless.com. Take a breath, Brad. Ooh. Ooh, take a breath. Don't take pass a breath. out from not breathing. And Race Car Spell Backwards is an RCB media production. Other than that, guys, y'all have a great week, and we will talk to you next week. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. You just listened to Race Car Spell Backwards. For that, we thank you.